What's up, makeup minions? I'm Kim Woody from Woody Artistry, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am back with a very detailed makeup look from the movie Arctic Dogs, which I did make in partnership with them. The movie came out back in November. So let's get started on this cute, adorable little fox, shall we? If you like me and like what I do here, it would mean the world to me if you became a sponsor on my Patreon page. All right. As usual, starting off with blank, clean skin that has been primed and lotioned. It's always good to moisturize before you do any makeup because uh, without it, body paint kind of just sticks in your pores and can lead to staining, which is no fun. I am going to be blocking out my eyebrows because I'm going to be painting on gigantic anime eyes for this particular character since she is a cartoon character. So I just have those ready to get glued down and then I drew out the design. Make sure you're following a reference image, which is always super important when you're trying to replicate any character to be honest. Um, so now I am going to be using a mixture of blue squid paints and Graftobian paints for this entire look. I use them for absolutely everything. So I'm taking a forest green color to create her little shirt sweater thing that's underneath her jacket. And now I'm using a brown on the outer jacket. To be honest, I don't remember which colors were Graftobian versus blue squid. It's been a little bit since I actually did the physical painting of this, but you did see it released on Instagram a while back. If you follow me on there, I'm on the same handle at Witty Artistry. So now it's time to lay the base of the colors for the fox. I am using a creamy white tone and just kind of putting that in the, um, the neck area and then adding some gray. Whenever I paint fur, it is always a layering game. I try to put down some sort of mid-tone using a, a detail brush, and then I go back in with some dark tones, and then I go in with highlights, and you kind of do that um, back and forth until it looks realistic. You want it to look like it has a high thread count <laughs> or a high, um, you know what I mean, like there's lots and lots and lots of hairs because animals have a bunch of hair follicles. Then I'm doing the same up on my face. Make sure you're studying jade and foxes very closely. You can see that their hair actually grows with the shape of their face and in a very specific direction. So on the face, it kind of all floofs out from the nose. So the jaw is going up and out away from the nose and the hairs are much shorter around the mouth than they are around the neck area, for instance, or where the sideburns are gonna go. So just add in the white, add in some gray, and add in some even lighter white. I am going to be blending it out with a slightly wet brush throughout this whole process. I found, because this was my first time using Graftobian paints, that Graftobian is incredibly creamy. I'll try to say that 10 times fast. Incredibly creamy. It sounds like a crunchy cereal. Anyway, um, it is a very creamy makeup. So if you're trying to cover a large surface area smoothly and you want something to blend just really nice into it, totally use Graftobian. Um, in high friction areas, it's really nice too because it prevents uh, itself from cracking or being rubbed off essentially just because it's more creamy. However, if, if you're using it, make sure you don't touch the area because it doesn't exactly have super resistance to smudging. But blue squid is super smudge resistant, so I am using that on my face with orange. I am going to be creating layers and layers and layers of orange around bread or red brown um, and like an orangey tone. Foxes have lots of different colors in their fur. It's their fur is really pretty. I added the headband just to get an idea of the paint scheme I'm going to be working with. Um, so this, the headband is uh, completely made by me. It's a repurposed, really ugly teddy bear headband that I got from like a dollar store. I ripped off little teddy bear ears and I used wire to create triangles um, for the size of the head that I then glued craft foam, like you know that really thin, nice little craft foam that you can cut like shapes out of and glue on cards and stuff. That's what the ears are made out of, and one layer that wraps around the wire, and then I hot glued it on the back. The back of the ears look atrocious, trust me, and they don't feel nice either, but they sure look good. And then after the craft foam was applied, I did use uh, colored wool 
to um, create the realistic fur texture on the ears. I, I really like how they turn out, to be honest. I am going to be using them again in future makeups. I want to use them in Foxy from Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, and then I also think it'd be cool to do Star Fox. This, this makeup was very reminiscent of Star Fox. So anyway, as you see on the face, I have the orange down. Then I do brown up close to the eyes and then kind of radi out, radiate outward with red. With foxes, their fur tends to be darker up by their eyes, as with most animals. I think it just helps with like light reflection. I don't know, but that's, that's just how it is, especially with this character design. And I'm blending it out, and then once I have the color laying that I, I think I prefer, I'm starting to add little highlights. Whenever you do fur though, um, make sure you are using a detail brush the entire time because even if, a, even if something is super bushy and fluffy, each hair strand will always be the same size. It's always super thin. So always use a thin brush to make it extra realistic. Doing the same mixture of oranges on the sides of my neck. This one's Graftobian for sure. I, I recognize those. And now I'm moving on to blue squid for some of the future colors. But this is a mixture of Graftobians. I am going to be taking a light brown and mixing it with that creamy white. And basically I'm trying to recreate the fluff on the jacket and make it look super fluffy. Like it's a wool jacket piece on the top. I got out wool to glue down, but it just looked really weird because sometimes you can't use too many 3D elements in a two-dimensional body paint because it just stands out like a sore thumb. Mixing both blue squids browns, I am going to be covering the arms and getting them nice and saturated with the same brown color I used on the jacket. Get it all nice and squished into our skin. For body painting, even when something's being painted the same color, I like to do it in chunks because you can see the brush strokes will move in the direction of the area um, that you designated for painting. It just helps me keep track of things in my brain once the, the, the eyebrow pencil drawing has been covered up. She also has this patch on her jacket. She is like a super awesome engineer fox in this kid's movie. So she has this big gear on her shoulder. Uh, it was hard to get this part right because the movie hadn't come out yet and there was only like two images of her available on the internet and none of them were zoomed in on her shoulder. So it looks sort of like a vague pinky purple color just in the shape of a gear. I couldn't read what it said on it so I just decided to make it blank. All right, to make the fluff on the jacket look fluffy, I'm adding the deep crevices parts first, just with a darkish, but not too dark brown in random splotches. And I'm taking a lighter yellowy cream color over the rest of it, and I'm dabbing it on in other areas that I want to start building up highlights. Now I'm going to highlight the shirt. Using a mixture of white and green, I'm going to be creating some texture on that collar and then some texture onto the shirt itself. I'm using a sponge to add some stippling. And then where fur is going under the jacket, it just is a little bit darker because there is some shadows cast upon it. So I am adding that. I wanted the fluff to really look like it pops and stands out. So I'm using a dark brown just on the under under parts of the fluff where it would be casting a shadow and in a couple of deep crevices within the wool as well. I want there to be a lot of depth since it's, you know, it's a nice wool, it's a wool coat. You know that like that nice fluffy wool you can smush your fingers into and smush around. It's like that. Get all the extra spots that you didn't get covered with the brown covered. Typically, I try to leave my armpits unpainted as long as possible just because painting over them is a pain because I wear deodorant. Um, so I always have to clean my brush after that, otherwise it's got like deodorant stuff on it. I left a place on the jacket to the shirt for the zipper. Make sure you do that. Otherwise, it's really hard to paint white or silver over brown. It'll always get muddy. Now to the little zipper poles. I am using gray and silver to create a little metallic zipper. You can do this really easily actually. Um, it's just a bunch of horizontal rectangles. So I'm using a detail brush just to dab that on. 
And now I'm using a detail brush to go in with dark green in between the zipper teeth themselves. Super careful with this part. This part is really tedious. Add those seams. The seams are just slightly darker because that's where there's a tiny cast shadow where the fabric actually meets the other piece of fabric. And then I'm creating a drop shadow from the, um, the wool that I am pretending is three-dimensional onto the edge of the zipper. I'm going to be, that was almost words. Um, I'm going to be adding a bunch more texture and highlights and depth to the wool. Honestly, the part I was having issues with throughout the whole makeup was actually making it look like convincing wool instead of just this like puffy caramely substance. I was having issues making it look like a fabric or the fibrous texture that wool has. I decided to make tiny little lumps, like little little hills, and that seemed to be helping. I added some texture to the patch itself on the shoulder, and then I created an implied seam. It is a raised seam, like a patch. You know how it has like the embroidery on the edge with the raised little stitching to sew the patch on? I'm doing that with a light pink, and then just gently drawing, or carefully drawing little dots all the way around the edge. And then I drew a circle in the middle. Making a dark red brown, I'm going to create her cute little fox nose. It's basically just a little triangle and fill that on in. Then fill the fur up to the point of the nose, which is pretty much white. I always try to leave my nose and mouth for last as well, just because I want to be able to blow my nose or drink water or eat. All right, put those ears on and I'm going to be pulling my hair back over it and around the sides, as you can see, is already done off camera because I always need assistance for that part and to see in a big mirror. But it's held on tight so the ears are secure and then it's gelled so the hair is flat. And now I'm just painting over the hair. Whenever you're using body paint to paint over hair, make sure you do not do this if you have artificially bleached hair or incredibly bleached blonde hair in general, the pigments can actually stay if you have that, um, that hair situation. Otherwise, it always comes out, it's, it removes with water, but when you have that light of hair, it can stain. So I just painted all of my hair orange, making sure I got the follicles and the scalp that was showing, so it's really convincing. Okay, moving on to the eyes. The eyes were difficult and I got them completely wrong the first time, I looked crazy. Um, I think this is the first try of me doing the eyes. It just looks super derpy when I was done. It looked great until I like stopped and, you know, took a step back and I was like, whoa, I look crazy. Um, but for the eyes, you want them to be symmetrical. That's important. Uh, she kind of has big ovally anime shaped eyes. Obviously I couldn't do that with my own eyes. So I decided to paint on some eyes. Um, which is a disadvantage sometimes because you have to keep your eyes closed for the illusion to work. But I found no other way of getting around it for this. So now I'm using greens to create her irises. Making them big and round and happy. It is hard to paint on your eyelids. That's a question I get fairly frequently. Um, you gotta uh, tilt, tilt your head, head back and then to just don't blink. Basically, you just wanna be nice and still as much as possible until it dries. So now with black, I'm going to be outlining the edges of the lids and then creating um, implied eyelashes. And she looks like she's wearing eyeliner. I mean, she's a female character in the movie. Foxes also kind of look like they're wearing eyeliner. Now add some highlights to your nose. And then I'm going to be creating her eyebrows as well with that jet black. This is super narrow brows. She's got some, her brows are on fleek. So I'm putting them in the center and then just gently making teeny tiny little strokes until they look like they do on the character. Blending out that white snout with like an orange cream color. And then I'm starting to add the highlights into the fur, which is when I think everything starts really coming together and looking nice. All right, on to sticking down the fur. This is really important for selling the 
enormously different shape and size of this cartoon character. Her jawline is huge, her ears are huge, and her eyes are huge, and without adding the extra area on the jawline, the big ears and big eyes just look kind of kind of weird. So I'm using sheep's wool. This is just dyed stuff you can use for um, needle felting or whatever you do with your yarn crafts. And I am using spirit gum. You put it on your skin, you wait till it dries, and then you tap it until it is tacky. Ladies and gentlemen, do not forget that step. Otherwise, it will not stick. So I'm using cream and white wool on the bottom part and then layering reds and oranges and browns on the upper part and I'm trying to fluff them into a general triangular shape to imitate the, the sideburns that foxes have. Then I'm filling in the remaining parts around my lips and then adding a little bit of gray shading on the lower lip. Then to create the little the muzzle that all good foxes have with some gray and black and filling in the upper lip with black and the inner part of the lower lip as well. She does have thinner lips in the movie. You gotta get it in there nice and good. Make sure everything is precise. Then I am outlining the edges of the eyes of the iris and I'm going to be planning where the pupil goes, which is always the most stressful part because Lordy Lou, if you mess it up, sometimes it gets, you'll have to like start the eyes over. But I got the highlight down well and then the pupils down well. Um, take your time on this part. This part can be super frustrating to make it look like they're not crazy eyed, which luckily the second time ended up working out. Apparently the first part wasn't on camera, at least in the editing, because there was just so much footage to go through. I really hope you like this look, guys. This one was intense. Uh, it was so much fun working with Arctic dogs. Please let me know what you think. <laughs> I'm an adorable little fox. <laughs> Do you like it? Mm, these are my, my floofs. I groomed them myself. Mm, yes. Need some sideburns. <laughs> it's not often that I get to sculpt sideburns on myself. That's definitely a unique thing to this situation. Although I did do it with Rocket Raccoon, but I totally went over the top for this one. And I'm so glad I did. But what do you guys think about these ears? I made them myself. They, they look way nicer than what they're made out of, I promise you that. Um, they're actually craft foam and a repurposed headband covered in sheep's wool, just like these are sheep's, sheep's wool too. Um, but hey, they get the job done and I think they look pretty cool, so I love you all. Thank you guys so much for sticking the end of this video. I love how it turned out. <laughs> I look adorable, what do you think? <laughs> And I want to say a huge thank you to you guys for watching and just supporting me and a huge, huge thank you to my wonderful Patreon producers. Your names are up here on the screen. Without you guys, I couldn't make videos like this, so I appreciate your support to the ends of the earth. I love you all and I'll see you in the next video.